Okay, in this problem we're asked to sketch our region R and then calculate the double integral of x squared plus y squared over our region R. And we're given that our region R is defined in terms of polar coordinates where theta runs from 0 to pi over 4 and R from 0 to the square root of theta. Okay, so I've given um, an xy plane with some helpful markers already put on there. So we have this first dotted line or the top dotted line is when theta is equal to pi over 4. The next one is when theta is equal to 3 pi over 16. The next one is when theta is equal to pi over 8. And our last one is when theta is equal to pi over 16. And then I've also drawn some circles just in the first quadrant, three circles. Um, each one is supposed to be, um, this one is supposed to be half of this va value. This uh, circle is supposed to be radius half of this value. So first we know that our region R is defined between zero and pi over four for theta. So we know that we're going to be in this between this top line and our x-axis since theta is equal to zero when we're on the x-axis in the positive, right ax positive x-axis, excuse me. And then uh, theta is equal to pi over four is kind of the line y equals x. And then we can look at our radius and our radius r is varying from 0 to the square root of theta. So we know that when r is equal to 0, we're at our origin. So um, we're ranging from 0 to the square root of theta. So we can start to make a little table of values. So first, when theta is equal to pi over 4, When theta is equal to pi over 4, we're at square root of pi over 2. And theta is pi over 4. And now let's, let, um, let's just make a table of some values so that we can start to plot our r equals square root theta so we can get an idea of what our radius is bounded by, or our r value is bounded by. So let's take our r and divide it by 2. So we'll have square root pi over 4 and see what value of theta we're at when we have that. And so we're looking at r equals square root theta, or when theta is equal to r squared. So we can just square this value, and we get theta is pi over 16. And we can also divide our radius again by 2, and again square it, so we get our theta is pi over 64. And then we can go ahead and just plot these values and just see. Uh, we'll also just do, we'll note that when r is 0, theta is 0. OK, so we have our point at the origin already marked. And we'll let um, our first or our, our greatest value of r is square root pi over 2. So we'll let this outer circle be the circle of radius square root pi over 2. And then at 
on that circle, our theta is equal to pi over 4. So we're at that point on the circle. We're pi over 4 radians along the circle of radius. Square it to pi over 2. And then when we're at r equals square root pi over 4, we're at half our radius. So we're on this circle that I've already drawn. We're at pi over 16 there. So we'll look, we look here and we see that we have our reference point is this first, this first um, reference angle. So we see that it very slowly increases and then it until this last half when it does the majority of its increasing for the r value, which makes sense for our square root of theta since, since uh, the square root function uh, increases slowly at first with values close to zero and then increases more. So Finally, our last point is at when our radius r is square root pi over 8, and that's right here. And at that point, we're at pi over 64, which is about a fourth of the, of the angle to our first reference point. So I'll just eyeball that. It's just kind of right there. So we've got four points. We can sort of fill in the, we can interpolate based off of that. Um, and we know that r equals square root theta is going to be a spiral since as theta increases, r is also increasing. But as we increase theta, we go around in a circle. So eventually we'll get to 2 pi, which is the same angle essentially as uh, theta equals 0 but we're at a different r value if theta is equal to 2 pi. So we'll be, when theta is equal to 0, we're at the origin. And then as we increase, we come back around and we're way out here, somewhere down the x-axis. So we're kind of spiraling out from the origin. OK, so we'll just, based off of that information, we can kind of interpolate. And we see that we have this kind of, yeah. we have this line here that uh, this part of the spiral um, is our r equals square root theta. So that's, that's our r equals square root theta. And we know that our radius is varying from 0 to this line. So when theta is equal to 0, we're just at the point 0, 0, since r is between 0 and 0. And then we'll look at the other endpoint. So when theta is equal to pi over 4, we are between, our radius is between 0 and square root pi over 2, which is this point. So our radius is 0 from here, and that means that we're including all of the points in between at that angle. So we're including all of the points on this solid line that I just marked, um, since our radius is less than square root pi over 2 along all of those points. And so using that, this this boundary as a model for the rest of our points in our region, we can kind of we can see that we're getting lines from the origin to to the points on our r equals square root theta, or just this whole region. 
above our r equals square root theta line and below our y equals x or our theta equals pi over 4. So those are kind of our two bounding lines. Okay, so this is our region R. And now we want to evaluate our, our double integral of x squared plus y squared over that region R. And so we have x squared plus y squared, which in polar coordinates simplifies quite nicely. So we know that x is equal to R cosine theta and y is equal to r sine theta. So when we plug in these values into our function that we're integrating, we get the double integral over our region r of r squared. And I'll just pull out the r squared right away since our y term is also going to have r squared. r squared on the outside of cosine squared theta on the outside of cosine squared plus sine squared theta, which we know to be just 1, and then dA. So we have the double integral of r squared over our region r. And so we know our dA in Cartesian coordinates is dx dy, but in polar coordinates, it's r dr d theta. So multiplying our r squared by another r, we get r cubed. And then we have dr d theta. Now we're looking at our limits of integration. So for dr, so how, how are we varying our r in terms of theta? Well, we already looked at, at what our region was in a similar way. We're varying from 0 at all, at all of these angles. We're varying from 0 to our line r equals square root theta. So that's going to be our limits of integration for dr. Now for theta, we're, our lowest value of theta is when theta is equal to 0, and that's just this origin, the origin. And then we're varying theta all the way to pi over 4. So our limits are from 0 to pi over 4. OK? So now we can. Evaluate our integral. So the integral of the interior in integral is from 0 to square root theta of r cubed dr, which is r to the fourth over 4 evaluated from 0 to square root theta. And we can go ahead and evaluate that. So we get so square root theta raised to the fourth power is theta squared. Over 4. And then when r is equal to 0, we just have 0. So we just have our integral is now from 0 to pi over 4 of theta squared over 4 d theta. So we can evaluate this, which we know the integral of theta squared over 4 is theta cubed over 12. Evaluated from 0 to pi over 4. 
So we can evaluate that. So when theta is equal to pi over 4, theta cubed is pi cubed over 64. Divided by 12 is theta cubed over 64 times 12, which is 768. And when theta is equal to 0, we have just have 0. So our integral evaluates to pi cubed over 768.